Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how long this thing can power this thing. Let's get to it. All right, I promise we are going to get into it, but before we do, there's one thing I want to clear up. It's a little bit of math, so bear with me, but it'll make it clear just how powerful a car battery is compared to a generator. And it's not really that powerful. So let's do a quick bit of math. Have this easily set up for you. Okay, the math, you're gonna hate me, but it's easy, it's quick. I just wanna know what is the generator equivalent of our car battery? Um, I'm just gonna pick a generic deep cycle battery just to show you, and then you'll see what it is at the end. Um, if we have a 12 volt battery that is 100 amp hours, 12 volts times 100 amp hours gives us 1200 watt hours for that battery. Similarly, if we take, for instance, my 1000 watt sportsman inverter generator here that has 1000 max watts it has 800 running watts it advertises that it does uh half of the running watts so 400 watts uh for 6.3 hours on 0.55 gallons of fuel which is the size of that tank so 400 watts um from here times 6.3 gives us 2,520 watt hours. 1,200 watt hours, 2,520 watt hours. If we divide the two, so 1,200 watt hours divided by 2,520 um, from the battery to the generator there, we are left with basically an efficiency factor for the battery of, it is 0.476, so 47.6% uh, capacity basically that the generator has with these given parameters. So that number here times the 0.55 uh, gallons of gas gives us 0 0.26. 0 0.26 times 128 ounces per gallon gives us 33.28 ounces per, um, or one quart. So a 100 amp hour battery is essentially the equivalent in an inverter generator of one quart of gas. Keep in mind that a car battery is about 50 amp hours on average, maybe 60. Some might get up into 70. So when you think about that, put it in perspective, you're dumping a jar of gasoline in an inverter generator, and that's the max capacity you have in a battery from 100% down to zero. All right, guys, before we can do any of the math and calculations on determining how long this car battery can power this TV, we need to know how many amp hours a car battery has. Typically, if you know anything about batteries or 12 volt batteries, you'll know that car batteries are starter batteries. They're not rated in amp hours, typically. They won't have that uh, on the sticker here. They'll be rated in cold cranking amps or reserve capacity. And there's a problem because reserve capacity and cold cranking amps don't directly relate to amp hours. So the best we can do and the best anyone can really do is just approximate. And we're going to get to that next. You can check out my uh, link below and I, it'll take you to a, a blog that I wrote where I extrapolated how a battery charging um, manufacturer company would rate certain cold cranking amps and reserve capacities as if they were amp hours. So you can look at the sticker on your car battery, see what the cold cranking amps or CCA is or the reserve capacity and find where you're at on the chart, and that'll give you an approximation of where your amp hours are. All right, so just a little bit more math. Um, this is the chart right here that you'll find basically on my link below, but it'll give you the different ranges of the cold cranking amps or the reserve capacity, which is also on there, and then what it would be equivalent, what it would be for the amp hours. So that is that there. Um, if you have a reserve capacity, for instance, my golf cart batteries for my battery bank, my GC2s, um, they have a 215 amp hour rating at 20 hours or a reserve capacity of 395 minutes at 25 amps. Comparing these two doesn't really mesh. It's like saying I have a four minute miler right here. So he runs 60 seconds a lap. He's labeled a four minute miler. And this one's saying um, he runs 55 seconds per per lap, which is under 55 seconds per lap, which is under 60 seconds. So now he runs three quarters of a mile. Um, it's just a different way of looking at it. Um, how long can he run a mile versus he runs 55 seconds a lap? What's the distance type thing? Um, 
So if you have a reserve capacity of 395 at 25 amps and you were not given the amp hours, uh, you would do 395 times 25 amps, which is what um, a reserve capacity is rated at at 25 amps, unless stated otherwise, divided by 60 minutes for the hour. And it gives us a um, amp hour equivalency of 164.58 amp hours. Um, we already know that the actual amp hours are 215 at the 20 hour rate, which is standard. This one's telling us it'd be 164.58 um, because it's a higher draw. The 25 amps is more than what the amperage would have been in this here. here. So 164 over 215 gives us about 76 or 75 percent. Um, if you go by the reserve capacity, it's going to be typically 75% of what the actual true amp hours are. I calculated this across the board with several different batteries. I was always very, very ballpark. Um, it would, I would be within about five or right on every single time by doing this equation. So you take the reserve capacity, 395 times 25 amps divided by 60, gets you that. You take this number, divide it by 0.75, and then you're gonna end up with pretty much what the actual amp hours are. Um, that's if you have reserve capacity. If you have the cold cranking amps, so for instance, I took a look at my wife's vehicle. She has 590 cold cranking amps. And then based on this chart, if I were to plug that in, she'd be in this range here, the 590. It'd probably be just over 58, so probably 60, 65 range is what I would guess. Her actual amp hours were actually stated on her battery, 60 amp hours. So it's definitely ballpark. And um, let's move on now to powering this with this, how to do it and how long you can get out of it. All right, guys, I have a 32 inch Vizio LED TV here that is rated at on the tag on the back at 1.3 amps. So if you do 1.3 times 120 volts, that's going to come up to 156 watts. Um, that's just not right upon my calculations. So when I use a kilowatt, which will measure the actual power going to a unit or an appliance, um, I found that it actually draws maximum 40 watts instead of 156, and it usually settled between or right around 30 plus or minus five at any given time. That was despite me running a game console on it, uh, jacking up the volume and everything. So I'm gonna go with a TV this size, 32 inch LED uses about 30 watts. So to hook up, if you had to run your TV from your car battery, you're going to need an inverter unless your TV happens to have a direct um, current hookup, a DC hookup, like for a cigarette lighter, but I doubt you have that if it's just your living room TV. Campers will have that or whatnot. But we simply take the positive, hook it onto the plus or the positive side of the battery, and always wear safety glasses when dealing with batteries. And then we will take the negative side and hook it up. I usually just twist them a little to make sure it has a good connection. And then with this uh, model, which is a Duracell, this one's discontinued, but they do make a different 800 watt inverter. Just hold this in. And that should power on. It tells us that we have 12.5 uh, volts available. This is a battery from 2016. So does not have the greatest strength in the world, but it's still running in my car, so why not? Um, I'll then plug in the TV to this. And now this is a modified sine wave inverter, so it will cause some distortion on the harmonics or whatever with the sound coming, sound quality of the TV. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's definitely noticeable. And to power it on, uh, oh, button right next to me. There we go. So I'm actually gonna unplug it again really quick. Put the kilowatt on here. Plug this in. Power this back on. Turn this to amps. Now this is telling me 1.3. I'm running 0.45 as it's turning on and it'll fall down from there. 0.4. The watts are at 31, 30, 32, 30. So that's where it's basically hovering. 
So now we want to know how long can the car battery power the TV? That's what you all came for. Again, a little bit of math. Um, we're going to go with an average car battery, smaller car having about 50 amp hours for this example, but you can adjust the numbers for uh, whatever your car battery is when you consult that list on that link that I have below. But 50 amp hours times 12 gives us 600 watt hours. The LED 32 inch um, requires 30 watts actual. We're going to divide that by 0.85 to account for the 15% in inverter inefficiency. So for this inverter to convert direct current into alternating current for the TV, you're going to lose about 15% of your capacity. So you divide that by uh, 0.85 and you're going to get approximately 35 um, watts total that are going to be required by the TV to overcome the inefficiencies of the inverter from the battery. So 600 watt hours, um, which we have here from the battery divided by 35 gives us actually about 17 hours of straight use till you achieve 100% discharge of your battery. Or if you divide that in half, if you want to have a chance at all to probably start your battery, we go about eight and a half um, to start your car. I mean, we'd go about eight and a half hours for a 50% discharge. Now, is it the smartest thing in the world to run a TV off of a car battery? No. Um, a car battery has a different um, engineering inside of it, how it was constructed. It is a starter battery. It is made to give off high amperage very quickly to start a car. It is not intended as a deep cycle battery to rely on when the power goes out. That would be what a um, marine battery or a golf cart battery, a deep cycle battery, a true deep cycle battery is used for. They have thicker plates. They don't give off as many cold cranking amps, as, as high of an amperage at one time, but they can go the long haul. So this would be the sprinter in the runner's world, and a deep cycle battery would be the marathoner, and that's the one you want. This one, if you deep cycle it, um, even below 30%, you're doing damage to the battery. Below 50%, you're really doing damage. And if you deep cycle it all the way, you're only going to get away with that a handful of times, maybe 10, 12 times max. You can do a deep cycle, 100% discharge to your, um, uh, your actual deep cycle batteries hundreds of times and get away with it. Um, they'll, of course, lose a little strength every time, but they can keep up with it. This will just give up the ghost after about a dozen or less times. So you don't want to chance it with that. Okay, so that's the basic number. Again, you'd be able to get about eight and a half hours um, powering this off of your car battery and still have a possible chance of starting your car. Maybe you get away with a little more, maybe a little less. It all depends on a lot of things. Leading to my next point, there are so many different variables and so many different um, limitations to these calculations because everybody's situation is different. First of all, everybody's TV is gonna be different with your power requirements. Do you have an LED, LCD, plasma TV? an old school big box TV, that all makes a difference. So there's no one size fits all. You have to do the math yourself. Uh, same thing goes with the battery, the age of the battery. How old is it? Is it brand new? Is it four years old like mine um, where it might just die at any time? And maybe you're not going to get that full uh, capacity out of it that you would get out of a brand new one. What are the conditions of each of the cells in the batteries? Do you have uh, there's six cells in here. Do you have five that are in great condition and one that's bad? So if you drain this down to 50%, you know, where you get the overall voltage of the battery, if you were to test it with a voltmeter, if you get it down to say 11.5 and all the cells are in good condition, it might not start the battery. But if you have five cells that are in great condition, one cell that's bad, and the overall state is 11.5, those five strong cells are making up the difference for the one, it might still start your battery. So there's way too many variables to go into making a definite uh, determination on how long a, a car battery can run a TV safely and still be able to start your car if you need it to. Uh, just going beyond that, we have the amp hours. Um, there's no direct link between reserve capacity or cold cranking amps and amp hours. So you can't tell one way or the other. You can ballpark it and get close, but Again, it's just another one of those limitations. Also, this, this does not take into account for why you're doing it in the first place. So if it's a power outage and you're looking to power your um, TV from your car battery, you can't do much with just the TV. So you're probably also going to be powering a DVD player, a gaming console, something like that. 
to run an Xbox, if I remember right, I think it's 80 watts to run an Xbox to do this. So that cuts your time down dramatically on how long you can power something with your car battery. And of course, um, just the overall damage that you're going to do to your battery. Is, is it worth it with a battery being a hundred bucks? You know, especially if your battery's a year or two old, do you really want to start killing it prematurely when you might get another year or two out of it before having to buy a new one? That leads me to this. Why not just buy an easy, fairly inexpensive inverter generator? This thing weighs just over 20 pounds with the gasoline in it. Um, 1,000 watt peak, 800 running watts. Um, this thing is great. I've had this for several years now. There's really just not much to it. Just the choke lever here, the pull cord, fuel lever here. You plug in what you need to. And it's a, um, this is an inverter generator, so it's good for your electronics. Uh, something like that might put you out 150 to 200 bucks. Consider a battery if you kill it as 100 bucks anyways. This thing is super quiet and um, it's, it'll be great for your electronics. So if you're, if you're in an apartment and you're able to sneak by with a generator like that, it doesn't make a lot of noise. Um, if you're just a first time homeowner or you don't know much about generators in general, uh, inverter generator is a great first generator buy for you. It um, just kind of covers all of your bases um, for the smaller things. So just the electronics, you just want to plug in your phone. You just want to plug, have some lights going. You just want to have the TV. You're not going to be running your hair dryer off of it or your microwave or your well pump or anything like that. Just the basics to get through a short term, maybe an eight hour power outage and you want to have relative comfort. Inverter genera generator is the way to go. It'll keep your TV running. Uh, your cable box, all of that stuff, as long as you still have cable or whatnot. But yeah, it'll still work for you. Um, let me just start this up really quick. You can hear how quiet this is. I'll keep talking at my normal uh, level, and we'll see where we go. All right, guys, sorry if this was a little long-winded. Hopefully it answered your question, though, on just how long a car battery can power a TV. Again, my opinion is it's just not worth it. Um, the one caveat to that would be if your car is running while your battery is hooked up uh, to the car and then you connect your inverter to the battery itself, in which case your car then becomes a makeshift generator as well. And then you just gotta run the cords from outside from your car inside, just like you would if you had an inverter generator. And then you're only limited basically by how uh, much gasoline you have in your car. Um, last thing, um, keep in mind that if you're going to start doing this uh, as, a, as a thing, uh, you're gonna want, want to probably invest in a pure sine wave inverter instead of a modified sine wave inverter. These ones are cheaper, however, they run the risk of damaging certain electronics that have microprocessors, circuit boards, things like that, that need a very clean uh, wavelength of um, alternating current like you would get from the wall. These ones are more blocky of the current type. So you might wanna invest in that, but if you just get an inverter generator like the one I have that I just showed you, uh, that is pure sine wave. So it takes care of that for about 150, 200 bucks, you're good to go and the thing it's great. I <laughs> can get about uh, 12 hours of use from my experience on one tank of gas with a very small load. So anyways, hopefully that answered your question, helped you out. If you liked it, uh, feel free to subscribe, leave me a like or dislike, whatever you want to do. doesn't matter to me. <laughs> leave a comment below if you have anything to add and uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching.